Hello there, my name is Ismas and welcome to another Blender Daily Tip and today we're going to be looking at uh, rigging in Blender, simple basic rigging in Blender. Uh, so we're going to rig this object here, uh, this cannon, so that whenever I slide uh, this slider here, uh, left to right, uh, this angle should, this uh, barrel should uh, also tilt at an angle like that. So instead of selecting the object and rotating it, I'll just be using a slider uh, like that, so that you know what degrees you have to uh, move it or whatever. So yeah, let's get into it and uh, get started. So uh, if you want to see the process of modeling this uh, asset and also texturing it, you can go to my second channel and subscribe to that, Blender Money, and uh, watch uh, the tutorials over there. Uh, but uh, for now, let's just go into uh, the rigging. So I've already set up a few things here. Uh, I have set up the slider. This is just a simple mesh uh, that I inserted and then deleted the face inside uh, to kind of make this bar. And then this is a triangular uh, mesh uh, that I added and uh, give, give it the same material as this, which is, which is just a simple, a simple principal BSDF uh, with a, a base color of green. And uh, also added some animation uh, to this triangle. Uh, just uh, sliding across so that we can see how sliding it would affect uh, this barrel. Uh, you can also just slide it here, uh, but uh, I just wanted to set it up easily so that I don't have to go back and uh, slide it between uh, back and forth. Uh, so let's go in. Uh, we're going to use something called constraints in Blender uh, to rig this up. And uh, constraints, if you don't, if you don't know, uh, they're just another way to rig objects in Blender without necessarily using uh, bonds. So you can use constraints and bonds to make more advanced rigs. Uh, yeah, so, uh, but uh, you don't necessarily have to use bonds every time uh, to rig an object. And uh, in this video, we're not going to use any bonds. We're just going to rig this directly. So I've also added this arrow, which is an empty, uh, to kind of parent, be the parent of this uh, barrel, uh, so that whenever I rotate this, I, uh, this also rotates. And the reason I, I did it like that, you can still add the constraints directly to this, uh, to this mesh here, and uh, it will pick up the same rotation as uh, this would do. Uh, but uh, the, the reason I did it like that, so that I have uh, some freedom, I add some freedom to this uh, barrel, uh, so I can have this rotated and still be able to unmade uh, this, give it a slight animation, so a slight rotation uh, to this, give a slight rotation to this, or even move it uh, without affecting the, rot the general rotation of uh, the barrel. So uh, this can help you, say, give it a uh, inertia force whenever this kind of pushes, kind of uh, uh, shoots out uh, one of these uh, bullets or whatever they are called. Uh, so it, it just juts back a little bit. Let me. So doing it like this just makes it a bit easier to animate uh, without, if I didn't have, uh, than uh, having the constraints di directly applied uh, to these objects. So let's go in and apply the constraint. So we, we're going to use a constraint called uh, tra the transform con uh, constraint. So let's go under. If you select the object, you will have access to the constraints uh, panel. So you just click on that, and then uh, you should find the transformation constraint. Uh, this just maps whatever rotate, whatever transformation you have on one object to another. And uh, what we're going to be doing is map uh, the uh, position or location of this object uh, to the rotation of this object. So that whenever we move, a, say, a one meter, whenever this triangle uh, moves one meter, say from here uh, to here, uh, this may move about uh, 30 degrees or 40 degrees. Uh, that's basically what the transformation done. The transformation constraint does. It just maps one one transformation uh, to another. So you can you, you're not limited only to location and, and uh, rotation. You can map say whenever you move this, uh, maybe this scales up. So whenever let's say you move this by one meter, uh, this scales up by say a scale of uh, 1.2 or percent or whatever so let's go in and set that up uh, so we uh, you can see we have if you look at the constraint uh, uh, the transformation constraint you start with the target by picking the target and the target is the object that will have that you are copying uh, the transformations from and uh, so we are going to pick the tri triangle because it has it's what we're going to be sliding around uh, to pick uh, the location and map it to the rotation of this uh, object so uh, the target is the object itself that has the constraint, so there is no uh, 
target input uh, so uh, what the object is so that has the constraint is the target so uh, then you have the extrapolate option that will we will look at that later uh, but uh, for now let's just look at uh, the uh, the source and destination so the source is just the the rotation location and uh, scale that you're copying from so uh, if you select uh, location you, it means that uh, you're copying the location of this object or whatever animation they have here and uh, mapping it to whatever you select for the destination so right now we are copying the location of this object and then mapping it to the location of this here so let's see how that works if we play back uh, though we have selected the target uh, nothing is happening because we have selected uh, because the, the range is still at the default range which is zero zero uh, for both destination and uh, our location which means that whenever this moves zero meters uh, this also should move zero meters which is basically nothing so uh, let's give it uh, some a range here and uh, see how that goes so our range if we get the measure tool I can see it's about uh, it's less than one meter so we can use that and see so let's see select this uh, so to access the constraint and say we want this whenever it moves uh, a maximum or at least uh, one meter let's say one let's yeah let's say one meter uh, this uh, this should also move uh, let's, um, yeah let's just do a mini a maximum of five meters and see how that looks you can see it, it is moving one meter but you also notice it only moves whenever this crosses uh, this axis uh, this is blender measures all its units are from this center uh, which means all v values on the left are negative values and all values on the right are, are positive values and I can see in our constraint panel I will only set positive values so that that is why whenever this moves across this line uh, it's now entered the positive values uh, which is in range of what we have here uh, the maximum and uh, you can see the minimum is also set from zero so which means that uh, from zero here uh, to here so whenever this moves uh, from when it, whenever it moves in a positive direction uh, it should also uh, move uh, this object so if we change this of uh, the minimum to be a negative number then you can see that uh, uh, this already moves even when uh, this crosses uh, into the negative values but uh, it's moving too far so we can change this from five meters to one meter so that is not too far but uh, we, we don't really care about uh, the, the movement the forward movement of this we want to affect the rotation so uh, but so here we are we are mapping uh, the location to the location so let's change that to, uh, to rotation and see how that looks uh, so we are basically not getting any rotation uh, right now because uh, the, the values when it changed uh, from location uh, they were reset to zero to zero so let's change this to let's say 360 you can see we are getting that rotation but uh, it's rotating in the x-axis uh, which is let me see if I can get my x-axis uh, which is this axis here uh, that's why it's rotating in the wrong direction so we want it to rotate in the y direction which is our let me bring back uh, the axis here so that we can see that, which is this axis here so that it's rotating on this axis like this instead of uh, the y axis the x axis so uh, so we would we, you can change uh, the number uh, the uh, maximum uh, values for the uh, for the y axis and also reset uh, the x axis to have zero but uh, you see we have lost uh, that uh, that rotate all the rotation even when we go to uh, the location and uh, change this to one I see that uh, we are not getting any movement on this object uh, the reason for that is that uh, we are when when uh, the transformation constraint is mapping the, uh, the axis uh, it's mapping the X uh, to the X and Y to the Y Z to the Y so all of what we have set here on the x-axis is only mapped uh, to the x-axis it's not mapped to the y-axis because uh, the source to destination mapping is set to that so if we want to map uh, the x location to the y rotation uh, we would have to change uh, the cells to destination mapping here so from we want to map the x 
the x out of the y so we can select instead of i want to map actually the, we want to map the x out of the y so we will change the value here uh, from x out to y and you can see now whenever this moves in the x axis it changes uh, the value of the y axis on this object so but uh, we don't want to um, move the object we want it to rotate and i can see what we have now so whenever i move this you can see we get uh, that uh, but uh, the range is too high and uh, it's going in the wrong direction so i'm just going to let's say change and uh, so another thing we have is that uh, if say we move this slider uh, let me parent this to this here uh, it started raining here but uh, uh, so <laughs> yeah another thing is that uh, if i parented if i move this object i think it's parented to this already if i moved it to say here away from uh, this axis it will only work whenever this value is in range of uh, the constraint values uh, we set here you can see negative one by one and now uh, uh, the value of one i think ends around here that's why it's, it only moves uh, this uh, object here whenever it crosses that uh, that slider here so if say we move this again outside that range it won't work uh, so if you want it to work anywhere you put it say maybe you want it to be around here away from this object uh, and you want it to continue influencing this uh, that's where the extrapolation uh, check mark here comes in so if you check that uh, whenever wherever you have this added it will have this it will still influence uh, the mapping you have so now we just have to play around uh, with the angles we have here set let me just put this here because I want this to be to always be on top of this like uh like a, a, a hud a hood kind of navigation system like that uh so we just need to play around with the uh, limitations here so i don't want this to rotate fully 360 degrees i want it to rotate around let's say 60 uh, by let's say negative 60 So if I slide this up to there, I think that's still too far. So maybe negative 40 by 40. So like that and that. Yeah, so that's how you do that. And uh, again, this this would be parented uh, to, some, to another object. Maybe parented to this here. And uh, whenever you move this, and also let's see and you see when i'm moving this uh because the slider is also moving i'm getting a slight rotation on the object as well so you may want to change uh the space to local instead of global so that it doesn't affect it doesn't affect uh the the rotation of this whenever i move the object uh but uh this still works it's just that uh I don't want to have that sliding and uh, that will continue sliding as long as you have this in the world uh, space so you can see because this is moving away from this and uh, getting in range of uh, the constraint uh, limit so yeah thank you for watching if you want again to watch the entire process of uh, modeling this go to the second channel uh, there are also other other videos i'm uploading there i like modeling this apartment building uh, yes, thank you for watching. See you in the next video.